let's consider sliding mesh gearbox and let's consider this particular figure so this particular figure is a line diagram for a sliding mesh gearbox in this you are finding in three shaft this is the first shaft then this is second shaft and this is third shaft this first shaft this particular first shaft is called as a clutch shaft then this is the second shaft is called as main shaft and third shaft is called as the lay shaft this clutch shaft is also called as input shaft for an uh, gearbox this main shaft is called as output shaft of an gearbox and this is a lay shaft on this particular shafts we are having a different gear mounted the gear namings are gear a b c d e f and g these are the various types of the gear which are mounted on all these three shaft out of this all gears gear a is connected on the clutch shaft and this gear a is a firmly connected firmly connected means or there is no relative motion allowed between gear a and the clutch shaft means if gear a is rotating the shaft has to be rotated or if shaft is rotating gear a has to be rotating one similar kind the b e c g these are the gears are also connected on the lay shaft firmly so ro no relative motion is allowed at the same time note that the diameter of b e c g are a different one so all gears are having a different diameter to achieve and different gear ratios now gear d this particular gear is a mounted on a main shaft and this is mounted by using spline arrangement now what is spline arrangement this main shaft has an external spline whereas gear d has an internal splines so internal splines of the gear d is in mesh with external splines of the main shaft now we know that when there is spline arrangement the rotary relative motion is not allowed rotary relative motion is not allowed means what the gear d cannot rotate without taking the main shaft or main shaft cannot rotate without taking the gear d so that's what called as rotary relative motion is not allowed but the horizontal relative motion is allowed now what is horizontal relative motion horizontal relative motion is a gear d can move horizontally like this without moving the main shaft and that's why i am telling that the horizontal relative motion similar kind the gear f is also mounted means gear f is also can move horizontally the gear d is called as first time gear uh, first time reverse gear whereas gear f is called as second and high speed gear okay these are various gear arrangement at the same time some tooths are provided here after the gear a and this tooths can mesh with the gear f by using this particular portion okay there is some one more gear which is used for a reverse direction this one that we'll see and later on so this is what a, a construction of sliding mesh gear box so remember that in this particular case i want to go with different torque and different speed to the output shaft let's see how it can be achieved now as i told you the diameter of each gear is different you will see that the b is the biggest gear then e then c and then further gears are available now you will see that when your input speed input power is given to the a a is in mesh with b so as a rotate b will also rotate now when b rotate this shaft will rotate and on the shaft many gears are mounted so gears will be also rotating here the diameter of the gear a and diameter of gear b it will be different the so gear b is having a bigger diameter whereas gear a is having a smaller diameter means i can say that when power is transmitting from a to b there is a speed reduction and this speed reduction will be according to its a diameter if diameter difference is too much high then the speed reduction will be very high if direct diameter reduction is not that much then accordingly the speed uh, speed ratio and torque ratio will be adjusted here current position showing a neutral position of the gear now what is neutral position neutral position is in which the input shaft is rotating but output shaft is not rotating so input will be rotating and that's why gear a will be rotating as gear a rotates gear b will also rotate and all gear will rotate but all these gear are not not mesh with d and f 
and that's why DNF is not rotating and main shaft is not rotating. So here, the clutch shaft and lay shaft is rotating, whereas main shaft is stationary. So output shaft is stationary, and that's why that particular condition is called as neutral condition. Now I have to go for for first gear position. Now for first gear position, what I have to do, I have to move this gear D by using gear shifting lever. I have to move the gear D towards left side. Means I have to move this and I have to mesh with gear C. So the after meshing, the gear position will be like this. You can see here. This is the first gear position. This is the first gear position. The similar figure is here. The gear D, as I told you, it has to move towards left, and it has to mesh with each other. After meshing, I will look something like this. I will look something like this. And now, as I am knowing that the power is coming from input shaft to the A, then B, and then it will come to the C. From C, with C, the gear D is in mesh. So from C, it will go to the D, and from D, it will go to the main shaft, and output will be available. So this arrow, here you can see that diagram is there. The power transmission line is like this. You can see that power is coming from this gear. It moves through the lay shaft. It will go, and it will be moving like this. This is called as first gear position. This is first gear position. Now, in a first gear position, we know that. Here, the diameter of C and diameter of D, they are different, and diameter of D is bigger than C. So, as diameter of D is bigger than C, when power is transmitted from C to D, there will be speed reduction, and reduced speed will be available at the first gear position. This is what first gear position. Now, when I have to go for second gear, so while we are going for second gear, first I have to disengage the first gear. Means the mesh position, this position, has to be disengaged. Means gear D. Which is this gear? The gear D has to move towards right side direction so that disengagement will occur. Once it gets disengaged, again the main shaft will be stationary, and the no power output will be available. For the second gear position, this F gear has to move towards right, and that will be in mesh with gear E. Means this is the position. So in this particular figure, if you see, this is the gear which is mounted on a clutch gear. This is the gear. Which is gear B? This gear, gear B is shown here. Whereas this gear is gear E. So I will write here the gear E is present over here, and this gear is gear F. This gear is gear F. This gear is gear E. Now when I move this gear F towards right side direction, the F will in mesh with E, and the power will be transmitted from E to F and F to Output. So after engagement, the position will be like this: the E to F and F to output. So power transmission line is like this, and from this it will go out like this one. So this is second gear position. In this case, you will find that the diameter of E and F again they are different, and diameter of E is bigger than that of the diameter of F. So when we transmit a power from E to F. There will be speed increment as the diameter of F is less. So increased speed will be given to F, and as F rotates, F is in spline with main shaft. So main shaft speed will be very high. That is second gear. That is second gear position. So in the figure, this particular will show you a second gear position. Now third gear position. I'll tell you this particular gear is having three forward position and one reverse position. So third gear is a top gear. Third gear is a top gear. The position or the arrangement for third gear is shown in the figure C. This is the figure C and third gear position. In this, we are not going to mesh gear F or D to the gears which is present on the lay shaft. But what I am going to do is F gear. Previously, it was engaged with E. Now I will move towards left side so that it will be get disengaged. And then, once again, I am going to move towards left side so that. This gear F will engage with gear A by using this spline, which is shown here. The, this spline will be used for what? For engaging for the top gear. Now, what will happen? We'll achieve this particular position. We'll achieve this particular position. The power from A, it will go to directly F, and from F, it will go to the main shaft, and from main shaft, we'll get a power output. So this is a top speed. I cannot increase speed above this. Whatever the speed of input is present, so whatever speed of this shaft is present, the same speed will be present for this particular shaft. So that is what called as top gear position. That is what called as top gear position. So these are the three forward gear position.
now as i told you three forward and one reverse gear position if you look at this one if you look at the this particular figure in this particular figure here <coughs> when the a b c d e f all gears are rotating we have to see with what rotation or with what direction it will be rotating so when gear a is rotating clockwise gear b was anti clockwise so this was a clockwise gear a was a clockwise gear b was anti clockwise when gear b is rotating anti clockwise so all the shaft the lay shaft is rotating with anti clockwise direction from that if i engage a gear d for the first gear so if this is rotating anti clockwise the gear d will rotate a clockwise and if gear d is rotating clockwise the main shaft will also rotating clockwise so whatever input was there the input was rotating clockwise and this was also rotating clockwise for the reverse gear position this is reverse gear position in the reverse gear position i am going to use one more gear here in between this is called as the reverse gear position in the reverse gear position what i have to do is gear d i have to match with the gear reverse gear so gear d has to move towards right side direction gear d has to move towards right side direction and gear d will engage with this one when gear d will engage with this one we should understand what should be the rotation of gear d so here you will see that particular position the figure d shows you reverse gear position now gear d this is gear d and gear d i have moved towards right side and as i move towards right side direction it will engage with reverse gear and then let's see the direction so if this is rotating clockwise this will rotate anti clockwise then this total shaft will rotate anti clockwise then this particular reverse gear will rotate clockwise and if reverse gear is rotating a clockwise this particular gear remember this particular gear which is of name d it will rotate with anti clockwise direction now if you compare this particular condition with the previous condition the previous condition was input shaft was rotating clockwise output shaft was rotating clockwise in the current condition input shaft is rotating clockwise but the output shaft is rotating an anti clockwise rotation so because of this small gear what we have got it is anti clockwise rotation of this particular gear so like this there are three forward this is first gear position this is second gear position third gear position and reverse gear position so now we have understood various gear position for sliding mesh gearbox thank you